We're sort of at this point in time that we never thought we'd get to. We always, you know, we saw after the Industrial Revolution that, you know, robots and automation would take over manual labor. And we were kind of, well, in the end, we were okay with that. We smashed a few machines and then we kind of got over it. But we never expected that knowledge-based work, things done by highly educated, highly experienced leaders, would also be potentially taken over. But the funny thing is, is that when you look at this closely, I believe that in the future, it's going to be activities, not occupations, that will be automated. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter if you're the CEO or a member of the board or somebody in a factory, there's going to be parts of your job that will be taken over by algorithms in the future. But the job itself may still exist, but in different ways. And if anything, if you see what's happened in, in the, the legal world, as we had more e-discovery and AI, what's actually happened is that we've actually been hiring more lawyers and more interns because as the cost of discovery has gone down, more judges have ordered it, and actually the use of technology in this area has increased the total use of this total activity, requiring more people. So it's too early to really say the overall impact on jobs. But this is the thing I want you to remember. We're going to have to make the shift as leaders and for the rest of your teams, from doing work to designing work. There was this 21-year-old kid I heard about recently. He got all these parking fines in England. And uh, his mother was like, listen, you've got so many fines, that's, that's it, I'm not going to pay for them, you're going to have to get a summer job. He goes, I don't want to get a summer job, I'm going to write some code. So he wrote some code that automated him getting off all the fines. <laughs> it was so successful, he set it loose on the internet. And the last 12 months alone, this little piece of software called Do Not Pay has overturned 160,000 parking fines in London and returned $4 million back to people. Someone should give this kid a job because he's the best ultimate example of what a future leader is. Somebody who leverages technology to not just try and do things, but to design work to be more efficient, more productive, leveraging technology. So when I look at the leader of the future, you know, I don't think the question is, should we be worried about machine intelligence? The question is, in the future, what will human intelligence be? What will a great leader be in the future? And I believe these are people, we're going to call them algorithmic leaders. They're people that have two key abilities. First is the ability to have a true insight into what makes us human, and empathy into how to connect with other human beings. This is going to be important, especially for all your kids who are constantly on their phones, you know, who've forgotten how to talk to people. We can't lose touch with how to connect with human beings. But the second thing we're going to need is a flair for computational thinking. And what I mean by that is not we're all going to have to go to school and learn how to program. What we are going to have to learn how to do is understand how computers solve problems. Because increasingly in our role as leaders, we're going to have to manage using real-time data, about using platforms, using systems to help ourselves make smarter, faster, better decisions.